Hi, I'm Jessica Amir. I'm a market analyst with Bell Direct, and today I'm with Mike Macquarie, who's the Chief Investment Officer of BlackRock in Australia, paving the way for what to expect for 2020. Mike, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. So 2019 was a record me. year for Australian uh, equities and US markets as well, largely fueled by record low interest rates. So 2020 may look very different. So what, what can we expect, Mike? On the global stage, we see three things that investors need to be concerned about. One is an uptick in global growth. The second thing to talk about is a policy pause. And the third is thinking about what resilience means in a portfolio in a record low uh, interest rate environment. So we start with the first one. If we think about growth edging up, particularly fueled by the US, you've got a strong tailwind coming from low interest rates. A very strong household sector, meaning consumer spending is really strong in driving the economy. But we're seeing a pickup in, in manufacturing um, and broad financial conditions are, are favorable for growth. So don't want to shy away from trade tensions and a potential uh, presidential impeachment as noise to that, that background. But we do see growth picking up globally. That has us positioned in a positive way towards equities globally. The second key thematic is global central banks are tending to pause on interest rate cuts. If we look at the U.S. in particular, we don't see any rate hikes or rate cuts in 2020. Maybe the next one will be out in 2021. So with that pause and the longer sustained low interest rates, we think that will help drive uh, further growth in, in the global economy. We'll come to Australia in a little bit because it is quite different there. The third thing we've been talking to our clients around is resilience. What does that mean in a portfolio? Historically, you've had this negative correlation between stocks and bonds, and bonds have been a nice buffer in a portfolio with the stocks. As interest rates have come down, 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 and if you look at the Europe, there's a lot of negative yielding interest rates with government bonds. We have to step back and question are those bonds going to provide the buffer that we would ex have expected historically? Going forward, are we still going to see resilience, buffering coming from those government bonds um, in the past? So that's something to think about on the global stage. So those are three thematics we're engaging with our clients on. So you mentioned manufacturing picking up, plus we're also likely to see a possible end to the trade war. So when it comes to investing in 2020, how do you see investors should be tilting their portfolios? On the global stage, there's three main areas that we're looking at. An overweight position in global equities, uh, an overweight position in credit or corporate bonds, and a neutral position in government bonds in, in the portfolios. Why are we overweight equities? We talk about the easing that has come from central banks. That means the cost of capital has, has come down. That has helped fuel growth. For 2019, we saw some pretty big returns. But if we look at valuation, it's still pretty reasonable. It's not overly expensive, so we're not too concerned on that front. If we think about the growth uptick, what that means to us is we're really looking at forward earnings. That's what we need to see. As long as we're seeing that forward earnings growth, which we really expect in the U.S., we think there will be a little bit of a, an uptick in, in, in Europe, that is quite positive. In this growing environment, we like things that are pro-cyclical. By that, we mean things that benefit from low and stable rates and a growth in forward earnings. So things like Japanese equities or emerging markets are two of the positions that we like in the portfolios. Thanks, Mike. And that ties in perfectly to my last question, one that investors have been waiting for. When it comes to Australian investing, what can we expect for markets for 2020? The first thing I'd say is 2019 has been a fantastic year. 
we've seen fixed income markets, bond markets, up into double digits. We've seen equity markets, high teens, 20% range. That is not our core position for, for 2020. We're still positive, but we don't think it's going to be nearly as, as strong. If we think about um, the economic environment for us,